it's just been a year since ChatGPT first came out, which has just been astounding. This is clearly the age of co-pilots. And of course, we're just getting started. Our end-to-end co-pilot stack for every organization spans the infrastructure, the foundation models, data, tool chains, and of course, the co-pilot itself. And today, I'll highlight five key themes across everything we're showing you this week. So let's dive right in. It starts with AI infrastructure layer and our approach to Azure as the world's computer. We work closely with our partners across the industry to incorporate the best innovation from power to the data center to the rack to the network to the core compute, as well as the AI accelerators. And in this new age of AI, we are redefining everything across the fleet and the data center. Let's talk about the network that connects our data centers. It's one of the most advanced and extensive in the world already, and to meet the demands of AI and the future workloads, we are driving up the speeds. Our breakthrough hollow core fiber technology is delivering a 47% improvement in speed because photons are able to travel through these microscopic air capillaries instead of through solid glass fiber. This is really cutting edge technology. In fact, we are manufacturing this fiber ourselves in the world's only dedicated factory for core fiber production. Our first deployment, in fact, is already live, connecting our data centers in the United Kingdom. We are very excited about this. And now, Let's say, let's just step right into the data center. Today, I'm excited to announce the general availability of Azure Boost. It's fantastic to see this new system that offloads server virtualization processes onto purpose-built software and hardware. This enables massive improvements in networking, remote storage and local storage throughput, making Azure the best cloud for high-performance workloads while strengthening security as well. Now, let's go inside our servers. We're tapping into the innovation across the industry, including from our partners AMD and Intel and making that available to you. In fact, Intel's putting their own SAP instances on these machines, and it's great to see. You know, as a hyperscaler, we see workloads, we learn from them, and then get this opportunity as a systems company to optimize the entirety of the stack, from the energy draw to the silicon to maximizing performance and efficiency. And it's really thanks to this feedback cycle that I'm thrilled to introduce our very first custom in-house CPU series Azure Cobalt, starting with Cobalt 100. <laughs> Cobalt is the first CPU designed by us specifically for the Microsoft Cloud. And this 64-bit, 128-core ARM-based chip is the fastest of any cloud provider. And it's already powering parts of Microsoft Teams, Azure Communication Services, as well as Azure SQL as we speak. And next year, we will make this available to customers. And when it comes to AI accelerators, it starts with our very deep partnership with NVIDIA. We have built the most powerful AI supercomputing infrastructure in the cloud using NVIDIA GPUs. And OpenAI has used this infrastructure to deliver the leading LLMs as we speak. In fact, in the latest top 500 list of world supercomputers, Azure was the most powerful supercomputer in the public cloud and third all up. Uh, that made news. Uh, what didn't make news is we didn't submit the entirety of our supercomputer. We submitted only a fraction of our supercomputer. So I'm thrilled to be number three. And today we are even going further. We're adding NVIDIA's latest GPU AI accelerator, H200, to our fleet to support even larger model inferencing with the same latency. We are also introducing the first preview of Azure Confidential GPU VMs. You can run your AI models on sensitive data sets on our cloud. 
We co-designed this with NVIDIA. Uh, running on this confidential GPU VM, you can enrich, for example, your prompt with very query-specific knowledge from proprietary databases, document archives, while keeping the entirety of the process protected end-to-end. -end. Now let's talk about AMD. I'm excited to announce that AMD's flagship MI300X AI Accelerator is coming to Azure to give us even more choice for AI-optimized VMs. With 192 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory and 5.2 terabytes per second of bandwidth, the MI300X offers industry-leading memory speed and capacity. Again, this means we can serve large models faster using fewer GPUs. We've already got GPT-4 up and running on MI300X, and we're not stopping there. Today, we're announcing our first fully custom in-house AI accelerator, Azure Maya. Starting with Maya 100, designed to running cloud AI workloads like LLM training and inference, this chip is manufactured on a five nanometer process, has 105 billion transistors, make it, making it one of the largest chips that can be made with current technology. And it goes beyond the chip though. You know, we have designed Maya 100 as an end-to-end -end rack for AI, as you can see right here. AI power demands require infrastructure that is dramatically different from other clouds. The compute workloads require a lot more cooling as well as their networking density. And we have designed the cooling unit known as the Sidekick to match the thermal profile of the chip and added rack level closed loop liquid cooling for higher efficiency. This architecture allows us to take this rack and put it into existing data center infrastructure and facilities rather than building new ones. With Maya, we are combining the state-of-the-art silicon packaging techniques, ultra-high bandwidth networking design, modern cooling, power management, algorithmic co-design of both the hardware and the software. This silicon diversity is what allows us to power the world's most powerful foundation models. Now let's go to the next layer of the stack the foundation models. And it starts with our deep partnership with OpenAI. And we are bringing the very latest of GPT-4, including GPT-4 Turbo with Vision, to Azure OpenAI service. Also soon, you'll be able to connect GPT-4 Turbo with Vision to Azure AI Vision, allowing you to prompt with video images and text. In fact, our customer WPP is already using uh, this today with one of their largest clients. Take a look at the video behind me. Pretty amazing to see video prompts as inputs and with summaries coming out on the other end. It's and today, we are taking one more big step in support of open source models. We are adding a new models as a service offering in Azure. Uh, we are excited to be partnering with Meta on this, it starts with Llama 2 as a service. You can fine tune Llama 2 with your data to help the model understand your domain better and generate more accurate predictions. Now, when we talk about open source, there's one more very exciting thing that's happening in this space, and that is SLMs. Microsoft loves SLMs. In fact, one of the best is Phi a model that is built by Microsoft Research on highly specialized data sets, which can rival models that are even 50 times bigger. In fact, Phi 1.5 uh, has only 1.3 billion parameters, but nonetheless, you know, it just demonstrates state-of-the-art performance against benchmarks testing things like common sense, language understanding, and logical reasoning. And today, I am thrilled to announce Phi 2. You know, it's, it's a scaled up version of Phi 1.5 that shows even better capabilities across all of these benchmarks. In fact, it's 50% better at mathematical reasons, reasoning. And Phi 2 is open source and will be coming to our catalog as well as models of service. With Azure AI Studio, we offer the full lifecycle tool chain for you to be able to build, customize, train, evaluate and deploy the latest next generation models. 
so that you can integrate these models right into your applications, right? When you combine the power of the cloud and the edge, it unlocks super compelling uh, scenarios. Let's say you want to build an NPC helper for a game. Uh, you can start with an SLM like Fi or as your target model on, in Windows. We then help you compose solutions to steer your game to do what it needs, like the retrieval augmented generation templates to apply on your data set, to answer questions about quests. This can all happen locally on your Windows machine. The NPC can guide players with their quests or even generate complete new storylines based on prompts from players. Uh, and of course, we're not stopping there. Earlier, I mentioned our partnership with NVIDIA. Today, we are expanding our partnership by bringing NVIDIA's generative AI foundry service to Azure. Uh, to share more, I would like to invite up on stage the NVIDIA founder, president, and CEO, Jensen Wong, to join me. Jensen, thank you so much for being here. Of course, we wouldn't have been able to train the open AI models or make all this progress over the last few years uh, without the unbelievable systems work we've done. But today we're even going a step beyond, bringing in fact all of the software innovation uh, that you're doing. Do you want to share a little bit about uh, what you are doing on the software side on Azure? I would love to. First of all, AI and accelerated computing is a full stack challenge. And it's a data center scale challenge from computing to networking, from chips to APIs. Everything has been transformed as a result of generative AI. Now, over the last 12 months, our two teams have been accelerating everything we could. Now, one of the initiatives, of course, is accelerated computing, offloading general purpose computing, accelerating all the software we can because it improves energy efficiency, reduces carbon footprint, reduces cost for our customers, improves their performance, so on and so forth. We built the world's fastest AI supercomputer together. Yep. 